Butterfly in the sky, I can go twice as high. Take a look, it's in a book, it's reading rainbow. Morgan, Morgan, it's the wrong show. This is lucky. This is Lucky Time Explosion. I thought this was about reading children books. No, 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 no. That's your other podcast. That's right. Holy cow! Hit me over the head with a frying pan because it's time for Lucky Time Explosion. <laughs> wow! Beep, 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 beep. Oh, nice. oh my god! Uh, it is the morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, we have Morgan with us as always, and we have a special guest today, Darren. Hi, everyone. Defretis, uh, yes. uh, um, podcaster as well. Uh, host of the Director's Lens. Director's, <laughs> director's Lens? Director's Viewfinder. Viewfinder! <laughs> God. It's okay. It's, it's not the best uh, title for a podcast. I'll yeah, admit that. I, I think yeah. view, Viewfinder is hard for me to remember. I don't yeah. know why. I love your your work, though. I did actually watch them, believe oh, it or not, you, even though you. I cannot remember the title. Thank you. That, yeah. that, that's, that's totally fine, yes. Yeah. Um, thank you. Nice. Uh, what did you guys do last night? Oh, I went to an art show. Um, uh, it was put on by Eva Mueller, or she had work there. Sorry, I don't have all this information right off the bat, but it was in the Lower East Side in New That's York. That's cool. It was, is it a place called Manhattan? Nice. And, I've heard uh, of it. It was a nice show. It was a nice show. It was at this old church, so I couldn't, like, they had like, this courtyard, and then they're like, no, you can't smoke weed here. You know, I was like, oh, man, that's that's not fair, because God definitely smokes weed. So anyway, <laughs> so I had to, like, go out in front and do that there. So, But it, it was you're, a really you're beautiful You're being a show. hooligan. I mean, you a know, it's not of, like I'm going to start going there. crazy after smoking a joint, though. It's not, you know. Reefer Madness. Did you see that? You, you see what happens to the guy who's playing piano? That's true. Did you ever see that scene? That's true. Uh, in what? In Reefer Madness, which, what year do you think no, that I came out in? Like the 50s? In the 50s. Oh, no, 50s, you know, 60s. That's, that's very anti weed smoking and there's this guy just playing piano and he's going faster because he smoked weed and he's like basically it's like what would happen if you smoke crystal meth yeah that's not true. marijuana but that's anyways true. yeah yeah we had a we had a show here yesterday too okay. uh as it was um four women uh collaboration with uh quiet lunch magazine and akeem duncan he's the curator so that went really nice we sold some work right. yeah Check the art online. right here right all this mm -hmm. okay i i do like um the art style I'm looking at right now. It's pretty really cool. Yeah, it's nice, yeah. right? What did, did you get it up to anything interesting last night? Uh, last night in general? Yeah. Um, I finished watching Love is Blind. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Love is Blind. The, the, that's, Man, that show is a hit right now. Yeah, it's just... Um, I, I, I find it entertaining, but... Yeah. I also got to do some more research on my business. Yeah. And, like, on what I, what I, where I want to kind of traject it next. So, with yeah. my, like animation and film production so i'm i was working on my website looking at business grants all these things right and then um i have a client project that i'm working on so i've been trying to get that animation project out too that's cool yeah, yeah. for those who haven't seen the director's viewfinder uh with darren here it's a animated podcast yeah it's uh yes pretty much a, what i call a live action animated podcast mm, i right. think one of the firsts but is it um are you using like rigs like a live rig are you like rigging the animation up to a person's actual video like uh, if they're moving around or are you actually animating each thing uh like so, by hand so in the future i would love to kind of have everyone puppet their own animations in real uh -huh. time but for now we do the recording and then i go home i you know take apart everyone's audio channels and then i animate a character like i, I can pick a random character from this program called uh, character animator which is adobe's um proprietary like animation for character animated specifically oh and so they allow you to make like puppets and these puppets you can kind of rig them however you want yeah. morgan loves puppets yeah nice oh, yeah yes. you know, i got a puppy he's gonna be showing his face <laughs> on this show real soon saul nice. saul so yeah. I made him uh, years ago at FAO Schwartz. They had a Muppet making oh, factory nice. in the back, uh, Jim Henson, and you could pick it. So, you know, you could pick all the parts and make your own uh, puppet. Nice, nice. Um, I wish they had that open like all the time. It's a shame. Like something <laughs> like that, I guess it just wasn't popular enough, but I created, I birthed the puppet. Nice. Yes. Yeah. What's the name again? Saul. Saul? Saul the puppet. He S O L. Like <laughs> yeah. He's an old New York Jew. Yeah. yeah. Nice, yeah. nice. He He's All got right. a whole backstory. He gets like oh, swept yeah. up by a. Well, you'll well, hear the story. Yeah, again. yeah. He'll, but you're, he'll be uh, he'll besides be a love for puppets, you also have a love for podcasting. Uh, what do you think the hardest thing is about producing a podcast? Uh, the hardest thing, I think, is to 
um, be very knowledgeable in, in what you're like trying to the topic you're trying to talk about, at least. So for my podcast, it's pretty much talking about the entertainment industry and the business of the entertainment industry. And that stems from like all aspects from uh, music to acting to filmmaking to um, what else? Uh, fashion. These all things are cool. entertainment. So you're it's, spending a lot of time in the research mind. Yeah, pretty much. I'm, <laughs> I'm reading the tabloids. I'm looking at interviews from like people in the industry. You know, I'm not particularly in the industry myself, but I kind of like to um, learn as much as I can about it because in the end, I think it's very important to learn about the business you're trying to get into. Yeah, that's hard with us. This is an art yeah. podcast. And, you know, I think the art world is very purposefully obfuscated and people don't know what the hell's going on. And so... <laughs> You've got a few, uh, you got a few different uh, sources that are like trusted, and it. it's like the discourse around art all right now. I was looking at an Instagram post uh, from this the Art Revival account. Do you follow that account? Mm -mm, no. It's a, the Art Revival. It's just this um, girl. I don't remember know her name, but she's very enthusiastic, and she goes to like art fairs and talks about you know the prices of the work too. Yeah. So she'll go in there and be like, "This thing is you know five hundred thousand dollars, two hundred thousand dollars," and she'll talk about the work a little bit. Uh, and the comment section is just always a dumpster fire of people going like, this is why no one takes art seriously anymore. Cause you have to pay $200,000 for instructions on a snowman. And like, I was just, you know, I, was, I was like, <laughs> and so there's a piece, uh, there's a piece that was in freeze. It's a, it's an ice sculpture of a snowman that just melts. And, um, it's $200,000 to buy the directions to build this snowman the specifications for the snowman. And then you have to take it to an ice sculptor and to have him build it for you. But you're basically buying the instructions oh, to wow. build a snowman. And it's sold. Out of ice. They sold three out of five of their $200,000 set of instructions. So that's, yeah, see, uh, your reaction there. Is, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I think. I'm like, that's amazing. Why are you like an existential dread over there over it? <laughs> well, I mean, I think that's interesting because it, it kind of goes back to like, I guess, learning the business of things because right. like the, the I, I think uh, one particular example that really got me like furious or furious about these things is that you remember a couple of years ago that guy sold a banana? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. I know all about the banana the, the, and the duct tape. Yep, and that's like art and a tie-in art and cat some... Catazlan Marcel, I think his oh, name is okay. like Marcel Catazlan. I can't remember. But I'm here's the deal. That. So this guy that did the banana, or I was going to ask about the ice sculpture, but okay, the mm -hmm. guy that did the banana. Yeah. What Why? did he do before the banana? Incredible work. Oh really? Insane, insane, hyper realistic sculpture, oh, and he had one okay. of the coolest shows that has ever been at the Guggenheim. Okay. So he had all of his shit was hanging in the middle of the Guggenheim and there's nothing on the walls. So you would walk around up the spiral and you would see all this insane, um, you know, these insane sculptures, almost like wax museum figures, kind of like just like hanging and suspended that is in there. Awesome. Okay. Uh, if you ever watch the documentary, uh, the cost of uh, what is it, the price of everything, mm -hmm. uh, I think it's called the price of everything or the cost of everything. It's about the contemporary art market. And one of the collectors they interview there has this uh, sculpture he did of a, hyper realistic like little boy kneeling and praying but then you like walk around and it's actually hitler Jeez. Like it's, yeah oh, oh like, like a um like a illusion, <laughs> optical illusion no That's... no like it's like a hitler like full <laughs> hitler face on like a little boy like praying like a little weird boy praying okay and the guy who bought it was like you know it's like um it's jewish and it's like uh, you know has ancestry who survived the holocaust and everything that is something and awesome. so they were like that we keep them in the corner you know <laughs> oh, <laughs> like we, my we God. keep them facing away in the library and they show it in that documentary but yeah a lot of people don't know about the banana like do you know the story of the banana like um, why I, I just I just um, know of the the fact that it was a banana duct taped to a wall yep. and it sold for a lot 200K of money. Two hundred K too, I think yeah. two fifty. So yeah, hit me, hit me. Why did he do the okay. banana? So this is my theory. Actually, I think this is just a theory. I don't don't quote me. I'm pretty sure I have the artist correct. If I don't, I'll be super embarrassed. But um, so the idea is that this artist, uh, who's an incredible realist sculptor and, and really insanely good artist. Mm -hmm. um, Everywhere is something he liked to do where he would go and every time he'd uh, stay at a hotel, he would like duct tapes, weird stuff to the wall just to leave for the cleaning staff or whatever, just to <laughs> cool. confuse them a little bit and be like, why guy, is this how here? Is he, I love that. How old is this gentleman <laughs> I, at this I don't, I don't know right now. I'd have to look it up. Older, you know, we need a Jamie. We need a, somebody in the corner with a computer looking stuff up for us. But mm -hmm. anyway, so he would do that. He would duct tape stuff to the hotel uh, for fun. And I think what happened was that like he had a curator friend who was like begging him 
to put something in his booth for for basil and my guess is that he was just kind of like all right fine i'll do this right and like did the thing he does in the hotels and like kind of almost as like a joke and right. then it just like blew up you know and and that that curator friend who, who was probably getting you know he was probably happy i guess at the end of that that's awesome no, that's it amazing. reminds me um and i know you haven't seen it and you have to see it untitled you ever seen the movie untitled i actually i don't think i have when did it come out Probably 15 years ago. I don't, it's an older movie. It's not too old. But anyway, it has uh, Adam Goldberg, and um, it's the art scene in New York City. And if you haven't seen that and you're an artist, yeah. definitely watch this movie because it's, it's hilarious. And there's like a scene where there's this guy uh, that just pushes. And I, I think it, this was before the banana, too. Um, he just pushes like this thumbtack into the wall, and he's just like sitting on a chair and staring at it. <laughs> and and, and the, the curator one is just like, this is perfection. And everyone starts losing it. It's almost like um, <laughs> when uh, Pootie Tang came out with the new song. <laughs> and, uh, and Chris Rock is the DJ. He's like, all right, and let's get ready. Here's Pootie Tang's new song. And he was ready. And he's like. <laughs> right. Or John Cage's and Chris Rock is silent like, piece. This is the best thing I've ever heard. So it's like he lights a whole studio on fire and the, loses his the mind. The thing that trips me out Amazing. about that, though, is that that's been like the stereotype for so long. You know what I mean? Like it's been so long now. It's been like since the 70s at least where everybody's kind of like the whole conversation around contemporary art is about like the minimal effort stuff, the small little con high concept nothing thing that like confuses and bewilders the everyman. You know? I like it. Is that what makes it like a high ticket price? Like, That's a good question. Like what makes it a high ticket price? Yeah, because uh, I mean, this the art in this room is, is very well done and it's very right. fantastic, you know. It's like beautiful, heartfelt yeah. painting and, and, you know, Yeah, photography. it took a lot of effort, a lot of work and the, just it can be better than some of the uh, the ones that sell for high right. um, high dollar now. But Agreed. I Agreed. guess my point was kind of just that like, you know, even with the banana or with this ice sculpture, like cause that ice sculpture that everyone's flipping out about on Instagram now was first made in the 90s in Tokyo you know, 92 or something. Mm. So uh, I think that a lot of what that high price that comes from some of that more conceptual stuff is there's like an unseen history of, of the artist's work and career behind it. Oh, I see. You I know see. what I mean? There's a, there's a reason that name is worth that much money now. So, okay. So for example, for like every M. Night Shyamalan last airbender. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, you have a village or whatever. Or yeah. whatever or you have signs. Yeah, you have signs, a village, you know, uh, these other projects. And then but people know him for this one thing. The or... airbender is so sad, dude. <laughs> they, they really just murdered the live action for those, right? Whenever I hear the name airbender, I just think about a fart. Because yeah. I feel like a fart is an airbender. That's am I, true. Am I, do you, 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 are, no, you are an from? airbender yeah. when you're farting. Yeah. That's so how everyone that goes. is an airbender mm -hmm. at yeah, some point. Everyone's a little bit. bending air with their <laughs> fucking methane coming from their aces. Oh, my God. Here and there. What would you do, Darren? If you were given the title, if you were given uh, Avatar for a live action movie, what would you do? Oh, God. Different. Would you do it right? <laughs> are you a fan of Avatar? I'm series? a huge fan. Yes. Really? Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, I actually didn't become a huge fan until the pandemic because that's when I actually watched the entire series on Netflix from beginning to end. I've seen episodes and I've been a fan of the episodes, but I never actually watched it in its entirety mm. from beginning to end. So I got to watch that and uh, yeah, I became a huge fan of it. Nice. But if I was given um, the reins to to do it, um, I think it might look a little bit something like what Netflix has done, technically, because I watched that too. Oh, yeah, the new one's out. Yeah, and um, it, it's not great. Uh, it's not better than the animated show, for sure. But what I would do officially, I wouldn't adapt to what's already been great. I would take the concept and try to, you know, create something like a new More world. More close to the source material. Yeah, because yeah, that's the big complaint, right, is that it's going off the rails. The way the way I would look at doing an adaptation to anything, yeah. I would say, like, if I, if I was doing an ad adaptation of a game, I would say, okay, what would the sequel be of that game? Like, if I, if, if I did mm. a, um, let's say, I don't know, give me a game. Earthbound. Earthbound? Oh, my God. You couldn't have said a better game. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, so if I was adapting... Um, like a film for that, I would say, okay, well, what's the sequel going to be like? Like if the, the game had a sequel, right. let's adapt that. Like the the yet to be made sequel and kind oh. of... Um, yeah, expand the yeah, lore. Expand, expand that. But yeah, of like that's nice to do. That's I an want. interesting uh, uh -huh. choice that you had too, because 
tell me if I'm wrong, didn't they actually make a new one for 64, but it didn't come out? It was never released. They were like mm. working on it and they never finished it. And it was supposed to be I think the so. follow up. I think so. I'm I actually, there's so much, I don't even want to say anything wrong about Earthbound because there's, the fans <laughs> are too intense. They'll come after me. Is it that me. crazy? Oh, people love it. I mean, it's oh, a yeah. great game. I mean, one it's of the classic. best uh, video game soundtracks yeah. ever. But I, I know mean. I miss that with Star Trek, what you're talking about, about like continuing, yeah. like staying true to the source material, but making new stuff. Yeah. Like, I really wish the new Star Trek was just like more TNG and Voyager. Oh, <laughs> that was because that's what I grew up with. You know, the original series even would be cool. A return to that. But, yeah, you know, I, I think that, yeah, people are messing stuff up because like if they're going to adapt things, if directors and, and filmmakers are going to start adapting everything like and remaking everything, why don't you just make new shit? Yeah, like you're just you're using the old properties for their name and then just ruining them, making all the fans well, mad. And a then good example new fans. of that is the up and coming Roadhouse. Roadhouse oh, yeah. with Jake Gyllenhaal and Conor Road. McGregor. <laughs> Roadhouse. Wait, I'll, I'll check it out. I'm kind of looking yeah. forward to that. I heard, you know, you're gonna hear all sorts of different things, but um, I gotta give that. I gotta see Conor McGregor act, man. Yeah, <laughs> I'm looking forward to that shit. too. Yeah, he's um, always acting. He's such a showboat. Oh, he's <laughs> and, and the like, worst. And, and Post Malone is in it too. I didn't oh, know yeah? his name was Austin. Yeah. What kind of music are you listening to lately? <laughs> Me? Yeah. Um. God. Um. We're here to probe your mind. <laughs> yeah. We want to know everything about you. Um, from the other side. I got to look at my phone, but I've been, like, I really listen, listen to music like that. But, mm. like, anymore, just because, like, I'm, I'm too distracted by other things. You're doing too much production that has to do with audio. E yeah. yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, no, we're, though, actually, th that's like me because I was in a band for two years and we made a record. And ever since we made that record and I was listening to our own recordings day in and day out. I kind of like stopped listening to music for like at least two years after that. That's oh, okay. a long time to not listen to music. Really man. long time. I'm just I now getting back that. into like That's enjoying crazy. music and like watch listening to it again. I really like Tierra Wack. She's like my favorite right now. Actually, I did listen to the entire of Kanye West's new album, Vultures. Oh, uh, okay. I did listen to the entirety of that. <laughs> I see. I see. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not bad. It's pretty good. There's some songs Do that I like. You see the new ad? For the for Yeezys that's going on right now, the for uh, the commercial, the sock and the the butt commercial. <laughs> no, I haven't no, seen that. They, he's got a, it's all over social my social media feed, and it's like it's just like a little Kanye track where it's like doing getting the bag or something like we're doing the money, getting the money. I don't know what it, what exactly he's saying. I forget, but it's just like a shot of a woman running with in like underwear. She's like in a sexy like you know see through thing, and then she the camera pans down, and then she starts running, and like the angle is just like at the floor. Or her feet are, you know, because they're selling the shoes. Right, thing, but right. just this like view of her butt, and she's just running through like a hallway for like twenty seconds. God, why well, I, I have not seen that. You can't <laughs> have seen that. I got to show you that. It, after it probably, we're done. It's as funny. you said it, it'll get like, you know, pitched to me now on on IG or something. But all the comments are just like, uh, you know, great angle, <laughs> amazing <laughs> angle, great shot, genius. Nice. Or being like, this is the worst fucking ad I've ever seen. Oh yeah. I don't know. Um, I will say when I am doing my drawing, when I'm in like designing a character mode, I'll yeah. put on like, like I listen to, to new, new music, but overall I'll listen to either Hamilton because I know how long the, 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 the track lasts. You're using like, Hamilton as a, like a timer. Yeah, as a timer. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll listen to um, all of like Elton John essentials. Oh no, the Apple John. Music. Yeah, good. You like theater? You a theater kid a little bit? Um, I do like I do like I like musical theater. Yeah, yeah. I like musicals. Yep. Favorite musical? Uh, I would say I have to say Hamilton. Hamilton. Um, but I oh got well, uh, Book of Mormon. I, I think is mine. I will say I love anytime Family Guy does a does a song number. <laughs> yeah, you it know, is so good. <laughs> there's something about parody, like yeah. when when a par like satire and parody when they're on their what's the saying? It's a, a good satire is indistinguishable from like the thing it's satiring mm -hmm. almost yeah, can yeah. be. Uh, and I feel like that that's why some of the best musical numbers like Seth MacFarlane yeah. or the South Park guys with uh, Book of Mormon. Yeah, they're musically inclined. Like, like Well, but, they went to music school, I, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, well, they yeah. went to film school, I think, because their first film project was the, um, the Cannibal, uh, the musical. Yeah. And the only uh -huh. company that would pick it up is Trauma. But they, they, oh, yeah, they that's released a trauma it eventually. Movie. Well, it's not. It's, it's, their, it's their student film. That right. trauma they, later re-released, correct? But it was their it was their student film, right? Uh, the Donner Party musical. Gotcha. Okay, <laughs> Have you seen that? Wait, no, no, I have the, not. Don, it's a musical about the Donner Party called Cannibal the Musical. Oh no, I've said and uh, Happy Spadoinkle Day. 
<laughs> Isn't at the end they they sing the song called? Sp- <laughs> Do you yeah, remember? I don't remember Spadoinkle Day. Yeah. I just remember the the pre frozen <laughs> "Let's Build a Snowman" song. You know, from Wait that one, he's like, "Let's build a snowman. I'm gonna build a snowman." And they're like, you know, he's going crazy, and they're lost and starving. And they're did, like, in the movie, did he have to buy uh, instructions for two hundred thousand dollars before creating the snowman? <laughs> you know what? I think he was doing it illegally. Uh, he nice. was building that snowman illegally. Nice. No, that's the. That sh- that stuff does bother me though. That snowman comment, just because like everyone's like, there's a comment in there that goes, is yelling at this girl who goes around to these art fairs and tells you how much this stuff is and talks about it. She's like so cute and nice and like very straightforward. There's nothing like weird about her. She's like bringing it to you. And this guy's like attacking her in the comments, being like, "You're part of the problem. <laughs> uh, you know, you're you're supporting this crap and it's hurting the real artists. The true artists are getting hurt from it." Who, and who are the real artists or the true artists? That's what I commented on underneath yeah. it. I was like, are the real, are the true artists in the room with us right now? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Like, who is actually being victimized because other artists are making a ton of money? Would it be fair to say that a, a true artist wouldn't complain as much and they just kind of do their own thing and hope that they kind of get there too? Oh, 100%. I mean, yeah. I think a true artist would know that there's no such thing as a true artist. You know, ah, really, that's very good. Yeah, there's no such thing. It's like it doesn't exist. It's not real. You're not a real artist or a fake artist. You're an artist and people are going to have opinions about what you do. Mm-hmm. I no mean, matter what. It comes with it, I guess, you know. Do you ever get any like harsh criticism from your stuff? Um, yeah, I- I've been told my animation <laughs> sucks. <laughs> They're like, this sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're just like, oh, man. I mean, I, I, I actually, I love um, criti- like uh, critical criticisms of my work because yeah. it just allows me to say, okay, if this person doesn't like it, maybe I can actually improve on it. You know, it, it kind of motivates me to improve on my animation and to kind of do more work because I'm like, what are they impressed by? Right. So, and then I'm, I'm going to assume anything like Disney or Pixar or DreamWorks. So I'm like, okay. How about Don Bluth? Who's that? Don Bluth, All Dogs Go to Heaven, uh, Land Before Time. Okay. Is that the. He, he was a Disney defect. He worked for Disney and then he left. So so was Tim Burton. Mm. Yeah, Burton that's right. was a. Uh, started at Disney. I oh. saw a really cool video yeah. of Tim Burton as really young when they're like going in, they're introduced, they're some, doing some video walkthrough and they walk into like a studio and they go, and this is Tim. And he's like this like 17 year old kid behind the animation desk. And he's just like so weird and silent, you know? They just go. I think his first movie was Frankenweiner, right? I think his first the, movie? Frankenweiner? Yeah, it's a movie where his right. the kid, and it's all in black and white, and the kid's dog died. I think it's Disney. It's, it's like a short, and he, he, like Frankenstein, he brings him back to life, like in the same way that oh. he, did, but he brings his dog like some back. Pet cemetery shit. No, that movie so scary. That, that was like his first like movie before I, Lam- I mean, for um Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, so yeah. that was like his first like I guess. Thesis. I think he was pretty damn young when he did that. Oh, okay. I yeah. don't remember, but I'm pretty sure that might have been his first like, you know, real release. Oh, right. Because nice. because I know the movie Frankenweiner did come out like years later. It was probably re released, and this is not to be confused with Frank and Hooker. <laughs> Which is a, a great movie as well. <laughs> that Amazing exists? film. Oh, of course. Uh, you know that movie, right? No, I actually don't think I've seen Frank and Hooker. Oh, Sorry to say. Sorry to say. You know, like I, I, I worked at Blockbuster, so I, I used to Windex all the shelves. I took such great care. There was no DVDs yet. This is like 98. And I'd line up, make sure the spaces between the, the boxes were perfect, and I'd Windex, and I'd vacuum. And I was like so into that, man, keeping my, <laughs> my Blockbuster clean. Mm. Meant a lot to me. Why is our studio such did. a fucking mess then? No, hey, I'm, that's kidding. Not the I'm truth. kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I got on my hands and knees and clean these floors. <laughs> it's true. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Nah, nah. Wait, uh, uh, speaking of, of Snowman, it's a weird transition, yeah. but have you guys, are you guys watching the Oscars? I know it's a weird transition. <laughs> no, you know what? I actually, is it, it happened, didn't it? I missed it. I did not pay attention at all this year. Oh, no, I it's didn't. on Sunday. It's on Sunday? Oh. I'm watching it. <laughs> I think I was going to maybe do an Oscar watch party here, and then I just totally forgot about it. Should we? Uh, I mean, yeah, why not? Would you come? Uh, I mean, I, unfortunately, I got plans you to got plans. Oh. Yeah, there go. No, He's I, got red carpet I, plans. I, I, I asked because you said, with Snowman reminded me of yeah. the movie I want to win, which is Anatomy of a Fall, which takes place in France, where it's like winter and snowy. Mm, good yeah. wreck. I have not seen. I think I've seen the trailer for it, but I have not actually yeah. seen that movie it's, yet. It's a great movie. I hope that one wins because um, it's pretty much like the entire film is, is a court hearing procedure. And I just oh. love it. Wait, what movie is it? Anatomy of a Fall. Anatomy of a Fall. A court movie. A court drama. Good yeah. Car- 
like 12 angry and men. I was you yeah. took the words right out of my mouth <laughs> yeah that's you know I used to work actually at a film center called the California Film Center mm. and we had the only official Oscar party in Northern California official Oscar yeah party. it was the official Oscar that's party awesome. and we would stream the Oscars to all three of the cinema screens okay. and then all these donors would come in their like Canadian tuxedos uh, and what is a Canadian tuxedo? Canadian, well, a Canadian tuxedo, I think, is actually when you have. Um, it's not like, like a Colombian necktie. N- <laughs> a <little different. laughs> it's Canada, so it's more polite, you know. Uh, Canadian tuxedo, I think, is actually a jean jacket and like jeans. Oh, so like, when you're wearing jeans and a mm. jean jacket, I, I, I was. I was called that before. Or yeah. I thought it was like a, a Texas uh, Texas tuxedo. Yeah, I thought it was a Texas tuxedo. I guess it could be either. Oh, okay, so but it still revol- revolves around denim. Yeah, I was oh, saying I that because they were actually wearing everybody was wearing denim and then like actual suit coats. So they were wearing like a blazer and then but they were all had jeans on. They oh. just threw the blazer on because like I guess they had to. I don't know. They're paying yeah. fifteen hundred bucks to come. They should eat do dinner. like the uh, the dungaree top and the dungaree bottom. Like uh, <laughs> right. Who did that again? That was. Uh, Canada. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Britney Spears and uh, what's his name when she used to date with the curly Justin hair. Timberlake. Yeah, okay. they had those. Remember Dungaree Dungaree? They had like the full on, like, nice. it's ridiculous. We can we, put it on the screen. It's worth it. Uh, <laughs> don't give me more editing. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. We'll put Dungarees on there for you. It's a good one. Man, I'm having fun. It's too bad we only have a few minutes left, so I think we should plug some stuff. Um, mm-hmm. Coming up, Crit Club. You said you like Critique. That's tonight at okay. Wednesday, every uh, first Wednesday of the month. We are doing a membership, uh, mem- Solus member crit club. So if you like, want feedback on your work, join Solus, come out, let's chat, let's look at our work. Um, other than that, we have Akeem Quiet Lunch uh, is open until Friday. Uh, visiting hours are noon to five. Come by, check out the show. And in the last week of March, there will be another one, as well as a solo for Gia coming up in the middle of the month. So keep an eye on our Solus Studio Instagram. Uh, anything else with you guys? It's coming up with y'all. Do you have any uh, new things mm-hmm. dropping soon? Um, not not currently right now, but you can definitely check out my podcast, Director's Viewfinder, on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, I think. Um, and I only have three episodes up, but they're like an hour and a half long. I think an hour long. Audio? So a lot it's of, all video? No, it's actually good. It's actually audio only. Yeah. Uh, so my next step is to actually create a video. I have clips on my YouTube. You're going to have this called Viewfinder. You have no choice. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you viewfinder. Might. Did you have a viewfinder as a kid? No. Um, I never had a viewfinder. Did you have one? You're talking about the toy? Yeah. Where yeah, you put the, the discs the in. The disc in. Of oh, course. that. that could, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you did. Uh, you yeah. know, the nice viewfinder thing. is also like the thing on the camera you look through. Like yeah. any any oh. sort of. <laughs> it's not just a plastic Shut toy. It yeah. it. Oh. <laughs> but um No. But a, a director's viewfinder specifically is uh, is a is a mechanism that you attach a lens to to actually get your shots outside of the camera itself. Shows you how old I am. Yeah, <laughs> everyone uses like monitors now, right? Like kind of big digital monitors you slap yeah. on the back of it. The directors you find the the big Hollywood budget movies still use um, these like they, they look like a like a like a gun almost where you can like nice. like, right. like like a telescope if you say it like that like a telescope and they can just look at the shots without moving the whole camera. Right. Yeah. Oh, before we go, did you are you going to take your camera to that guy on uh, 40 45 Canal Street. Oh yeah, um <laughs> I should I should have brought it today actually. Yeah. You should. <laughs> yeah, my camera is uh if you don't know, I think it's still there. There's like a there's a tiny electronic repair shop for it's the address is 45 Canal Street. Oh, okay. And it's just this Chinese dude who's like smoking inside always <laughs> and it's just like tons of shelves of like random stuff. You go there, you give him the thing, he gives you one of those like fair tickets. Uh-huh. You know like a raffle ticket yeah. and then uh you come back and it's cash only. But he'll fix like anything for like under a hundred bucks. Oh, wow. And I'll fix my scanner. He fix all sorts he'll of strange stuff. He can fix anything. Yeah, he's great. He's uh-huh. amazing. I would love to. It might come back with like a different power cord and smelling a little bit like cigarettes, <laughs> Could I just, but it's like, good. Give him me so he yeah. can fix me and send me back with a different power cord. No, but I bet you anybody he would like hook you up somebody with uh, acupuncture. They'll fix <laughs> oh, you yeah. up nice. in Chinatown. Go down. He's like, I do anything. All right, guys, we got to go. We got to get out of here. We got to go get some Chinese medicine. Yes, uh, don't China forget Town. to like and follow. Oh, yeah, like, subscribe, subscribe. follow. Subscribe, like, subscribe, follow. And yes. don't forget, you can find us on Patreon. Director's and Viewfinder. Next week, Darren. the Patreon is going to be looking a little bit new, so get, get on it, Morgan. What happened? Get on it. Make the Patreon awesome. I'm pushing you. Okay. I'm pushing you. Like, like, press the button, call to action. See you guys next time. Toodles.